I helped a Jewish kid steal a Christmas tree. He complained his family never had a Christmas tree. What ducked up thing did you do as a kid? What's going on brachacho, it's your boy Andrew, back again with another story time. Since you're already here, can hit that mf like button? And subscribe for more stories. If you do, I'll buy you some jewel pods. Anyways, let's get into the stories. My older brother pissed me off so I pissed in a super soaker. Pooped my pants when I was like 5. Didn't want to tell anyone, so I dropped it in the heater duct in my room. House got sold and we moved away not long after, unrelated. My stepmom was abusive to me so when she'd fall asleep I'd say mean things to her, hoping she'd hear it in her dreams. More stupid than ducked up. When I was 5 I had hair down to my ass. I was tired of my mom brushing it so I cut it all off and peed on it in a bucket. I was absolutely terrible to the first man my mom dated after she and my father split. Really terrible. I once told the man, in the middle of dinner and apropos of nothing, that I hated him man hoped he died in a car wreck on the way home. Said calmly, with a straight face. That man did nothing wrong, was always good to me. I still feel terrible about it more than 20 years later. When I decided I was done playing my dolls my brother and I hung them on the dartboard and used them for practice. My friends and cousins would come over and we'd shoot darts at the dolls. It was a good time. Edit. One of the dolls had a loose head so my cousin and I would just throw it violet around for hours and get the adults to put the head back on every time it fell off. Then we started again. I would make animal tails out of paper, tape them to my butt, then pretend I was said animal and run around on all fours, making animal noises. I did not turn out to be a furry, however. Once when pretending to be a ring-tailed lemur I pranced straight into a closed glass patio door. Maybe that smacked the furry out of me. I thought it would be a great practical joke to bury a corn holder, small handle with two sharp prongs to hold corn on the cob, pointy side up in my yard, and wait for someone to step on it. Of course, being a kid after all, I lost interest after a time and forgot. Sometime later in the summer, while walking barefoot, yes, I stepped on it. Duck that hurt. Learned a valuable lesson about practical jokes. My sister and I would ask our friends a question. If they answered wrong we would be like you dumbest donkey. And ride the person while making donkey noises saying walk, donkey. You stupid ass. And so on. A friend once said New York was the capital of the states and we ducking rode him for half an hour. Edit. We did thus from age 6 to around 13. We would not ask the donkey, it was more of a tackle situation. Yes I did grow up to be into BDSM. My dad had bad OCD and made the family miserable because of it. As a teenager on Fridays after school I would rearrange the furniture in the house or his precious tools in his workshop garage and then disappear for the weekend. As an adult I realize he couldn't control it and he loved us deep down and I feel guilty about it. But at the time it was hilarious to me and my siblings and felt good. Threw two big bags of hamster bedding through my fan and acted like a news forecaster and acted like it was snowing, and parents woke up to my room being covered in over an inch of bedding needless to say, I didn't own the hamster anymore. I tried to poison my mom's boyfriend. I was probably around 11. I had one of those science kits from the Scholastic Book Fair. I took the citric acid and dumped the whole container into his drink. He sipped it and just said, this tastes like crap, and dumped it out lol. My cousin and I were like 7-ish or so and playing upstairs in a room by ourselves. My aunt left her sewing machine in there ready to go. We were fascinated by how fast the needle moved up and down when we stepped on the foot pedal. Then we had the idea to see who could get their finger out of the way before the needle started moving. He went. Safe. I went. Safe. He went. Blood shot out and screaming commenced. My friends and I were out riding out bikes and saw a dead squirrel in the road. Kid Logic said picking that carcass up with some sticks, carrying it to a random front step, and doing a ding-ding ditch was a good idea. About a week later we notice a for sale sign in that house. To this day I'm suspicious this poor family thought they were being targeted by some sociopath and nope the duck out of there. 
My friend and I ripped and stole pages out of a neighbor's Cosmo that had pictures of boobs. I think it might have been for breast self-exams? We were 10-year-old girls at the time and got totally busted by my parents. That same friend and I got into a different neighbor's trash bags after Thanksgiving and decided to sample some of their leftovers. What the actual duck? Kids are so strange. I used to pee on my brother's bed in the mornings so I would get first crack at video games or TV while he helped clean up his mess. Update I did not pee on my brother, I used to make sure that I was peeing away from him and on top of the covers. This occurred just a couple of times, probably coinciding with some video game we rented for the weekend. I'm sure my parents were aware something was off about the whole thing, but they never let on and now don't recall being suspicious of me. I've told the story to my family and we laugh about it now, my brother doesn't recall wetting the bed at that age. I am sorry for what I did, it was selfish action, but watching him playing video games wrong was very frustrating as a kid. On 1991, after seeing Mike Tyson getting arrested on the news, I asked my dad what rape was and he told me it meant hurting a girl. So you can picture 7 to 8 year old me running to the teacher to say stuff like teacher, come. Jack, John and George are raping Molly on the playground. Or threatening my classmates with rape, if they were annoying me, boys included, cause I thought this way I was also insulting them by calling them girls. Edit. The final straw for the teacher was when two kids on my classroom were fighting, and I teased one of them with a sarcastic tone. Oh poor you, you don't like getting raped? The teacher ran towards me, like what did you just say? So I explained to her, still teasing him. Well, Ms. Sarah. He's like a girl, so we rape him instead of hitting him. I pour a bottle of honey at the metal gate of a neighbor after a feud with them. I waited for half a year before they started a feud with another neighbor. On the very next day, I brought a large bottle of honey and pour onto the metal gate of the house. Not only it is sticky, it is also full of ants, and the ants were at their doorsteps as well as the metal gate. They spent the time fighting with another neighbor whom insisted that they will not do such things. They ended up having to change the entire metal gate. For me, on another hand, I helped them to clean up their doorways as well. They were grateful to me for my deed, but they did not knew that I masterminded and executed the entire deed without anyone knowing. Not even my parents. When I was in first grade a girl wouldn't let me in her club. So the next morning our teacher took away her sunglasses because she was wearing them during class. During recess I snuck into the classroom and placed the sunglasses in the girl's desk. Then I told the teacher when we got back that I saw her take her sunglasses back during recess. My teacher believed me, the girl denied it. The teacher pushed down her desk and the sunglasses were there. She got in trouble for not only stealing, but for lying about it. No one ever found out it was me all along. And that is just one story of why I am going to hell. Jesus Christ mine is really not as bad as everyone else. We grew up not having a lot of money. One day my dad had the day off and he wanted to treat me to a restaurant by his work that he always wanted to go to. I was an asshole and I complained the whole time and thought the place was too cheap. He was excited to take me. I feel awful. Edit. Thank you for the gold. I am going on a trip to India with my parents next week to visit my dad's family. He always gets really excited to take us there and show us his family and where he grew up. I promise you all I will apologize to him and make it up to him there. Update. I just apologized to him on my last day with him here in India. Thanks to everyone who encouraged me to do it, that was freeing. In 8th grade, in the fall season, my friends and I were hanging out in this tunnel. It was filled with dry leaves. As we sat on the walls of the tunnel shooting the crap, I was mindlessly throwing matches into the leaves. I had this weird obsession with fire since I was really young. I was spacing out just staring at the little flames until my friend grabbed me and pointed out how fast it was spreading. We started stomping on the leaves and the fire just kept rapidly spreading. We looked at the openings of the tunnel and black smoke was just pluming out of both ends. A few other things happened after that, but it ended with my friends and I running away. The way our neighborhood worked, we could see the tunnel from my friend's house without being seen by anyone else. The tunnel had a massive flame coming out of both ends. 
I can't believe how bad the fire was. But it was in a remote area, there wasn't anything close to it that it could burn down. Not justifying what I did, because it was extremely reckless, dangerous and destructive. But all things considered it was pretty harmless, and luckily I never got caught. Thanks for watching. What did you think of the story time? Let me know in the comments below. If you liked the video smash that like button and subscribe so you don't miss any more story times.